the lovely idea to, to get a second one in the blues category, so well, that's uh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very, very privileged and very proud. I probably should be sitting on a rocking chair and uh, eating soft biscuits, but uh, stuff them all, I'd say. I tell you what, it was nice. We, we were just saying, actually, before you uh, mentioned it on stage, I was just mentioning to some of the young whippersnappers here who may not have been around when the real thing came out. I was saying, you know, uh, do you know who produced the, the real thing? And of course, you got up there, and the first thing you said is, is thank Molly Meldrum. But that, that connection just gives a little, little bit of insight into that, that, back, that huge background. It has been a, a great journey. I hate that word. But it has been a great thing. Ian and I have been mates for years, or we hated each other for about four years, but we've been pretty good mates and uh, he's been a great mentor and since I uh, uh, did this, uh, the new album with uh, Michael, he's uh, been incredibly supportive, he was supportive of the first two and uh, he was the one that said to me, you've got to go with Michael, you know, he's your mate, you know, so I love him dearly and uh, it's uh, great to see him here, it really is great to see him here. Now, I don't usually hear Chuggy called Michael, but uh, Chuggy, you, a little bit of perspective from you as a man who's been around music all your life and has, has worked with so many people, working with Russell. Now, no swearing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, look, um, we have Chug music and we're doing very well with a lot of young, uh, cutting-edge pop and alternative <laughs> bands. And uh, Russell uh, came, started talking to Nicholas, my son, about stuff and... Uh, he was doing the third album and we said, well, you know, we've got a pretty good thing going with Sebastian at MGM and Groove Merchants and you can make a lot more money out of doing it with us than you can doing it with one of the big multinationals, which they'll hate to hear, but so we did it and it's doing really well and Russell thought he had no chance up against Jimmy Barnes and Kev Carmody and uh, I had to yell and beg him to come up tonight and he said if I don't fucking win you're paying for my airfares. <laughs> so here we are. It's yeah. been great because uh, not only have we done this album that we released with Sebastian, we've released uh, Shark Mouth in America and it's getting good airplay and there's a, uh, a cut down video series on uh, Roots uh, which is one of the big blues websites in America and Russell went and played an Americana and it's pretty exciting when we bring in an old man in America. So we're pretty, uh, we're really happy about it and I think it's great. Australian music's in good shape and uh, Russell's working very hard all around the place and obviously this ARIA award will uh, help sell a lot more records and hopefully it'll give us a bit more push in America, but we're very proud to be involved. I mean, when I moved to Melbourne from Tasmania way back in the late 60s, one of the first bands I saw at this old, uh, old ballroom in Paran in Chapel Street was Russell Morris and somebody's image. So it's really exciting for us to be involved and to have my son running the project and keep it all together. We're really proud to be involved with Russell. So yeah, it's been great. It is great. Just, just very quickly, Russell, the, uh, the the trilogy and your interest in Australian history and the characters that you've discovered that are part of these songs, a part of these albums too. Where's that fascination come from? You know, who are these characters? Well, they're characters that uh, our ancestors probably would have known through six degrees of separation. Um, the first album was uh, about urban, it was about the urban gangsters and gamblers. second album was the bigger picture of like uh, the ships that brought the prisoners out here, the convicts and uh, some of the, uh, the Eureka Stockade, the wars. The third album I had to include the indigenous people that have been here for 40,000 years. So I've got a couple of their stories of some real heroes like Pemaway, who was a great hero, and Ben Along and uh, also the Kadija Man and the third one is really about the interior heart of Australia and uh, that's it, I won't do any more historical albums but I just wanted to do three and now now I'm like a blind man in a cave with a candle trying to find out what I'm going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> well I'm sure it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, any questions for Russell before we yeah, Quick question down here. Next question is, how long do you think you 
keep going through this. I mean, having jubilated success in your later years, some of you can still perform and do records in the form of Well, um... I don't know. The question was, is how long do I can I continue to do this? Um, as long as uh, Michael Chug keeps giving me performance-enhancing drugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, <I'm> kidding. <laughs> um, who knows? You know, how long's a piece of string? You know, um, I'm enjoying it. I really love what I'm doing. I feel I'm creative. I, if I wasn't creative, I would feel that I would chuck the towel in, maybe. Although for 30 years nothing happened for me, so maybe I should have chucked the towel in then. <laughs> Brian Cadd had the best... I was driving with Brian Cadd in a, in a car years ago and he, he looked at me and he said, I'm so embarrassed. I said, what do you mean you're embarrassed? Oh, I'm embarrassed, so should you. Why? <laughs> he said, because we're in the music business. And he said, and I've lived to be too old. I should have died young. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what happens in the music business. You're supposed to die young and pretty, but uh, unfortunately we've stuck around. I guess I've been the tortoise that's just kept walking. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Russell Morris and Chucky. Thank you.